Welcome to the Friends with Money podcast, brought to you by Money Magazine, creating financial freedom for Australians since 1999. Hello, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Friends with Money, Money Magazine's podcast to help you earn, save, and achieve your financial goals. My name is Tom Watson, a senior journalist here at Money Magazine, and as always, it is great to be with you. Today's episode is brought to you by Aware Super. Have you been thinking about retirement? Well, Aware Super's My Retirement Planner is helping their members get retirement ready, whether retirement is two or 20 years away. Find out how Aware Super could help you get retirement ready at aware.com.au. Be sure to read the PDS and TMD before deciding. So on to the show, and today's topic is one that I love because it could, and I guess for some is already, uh, having an impact. And so it could have an impact on all of our financial lives in a uh, in a really useful way. We, of course, are talking about open banking. And to guide us along the way, I am pleased to say that we are joined by Chris Devont, Head of Product Management at Fintech Frollo, who are, uh, amongst other things, the uh, creators of the Frollo app. So Chris, welcome back to Friends With Money. Hey, Tom. Nice to be back. Oh, it's lovely to have you here, I'm mate. Excited for today. <laughs> it's good, uh, good to chat and finally, uh, finally meet you across the uh, the podcast medium, uh, Chris. I guess to start us off, can you explain to us what exactly open banking is? Yeah, sure, Tom. So the government saw an opportunity to encourage more competition in the marketplace, whether it be banking, telco, or energy. So what they did is they launched the consumer data rights, in short, CDR which is basically a set of rules and regulations meant to give you as a consumer more control over your own data. And it means that when you share it, it is protected from a regulated party. Open banking was the first of the consumer data rights initiative. And basically what it meant was that you are able to share your own banking data with an accredited third party. And basically it just means that you can use it for, let's just say, for getting a loan uh, it could also be to see all your finance in one place. These are just two examples. And more importantly, it just meant that you never needed to share your password. So mm. old old ways of doing it meant that you needed to share your password. And additionally, it means as an accredited third party, we are talking directly with the banks themselves. The way systems talk is through an API, and we are directly connecting to the banks themselves, and they are passing that information on to us. And so what the government was trying to do here is really around sharing that data encourages new ways for products and services to 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 be created in the marketplace. I want to uh, kind of get into that aspect a little bit more in a second, but w- one of the points that you touched on there briefly, and I think is probably on a lot of people's minds at the moment, Chris, is is the safety of of, of their data, you know, that obviously isn't limited to concerns about financial data, but but how do participants in, you know, the open banking system ensure that their, uh, their users' data is, is kept private and, uh, and kept safe? Yeah, no, good question, Tom. First of all, you need to be an accredited body by the ACCC. And so what the ACCC does is, it, it, as I mentioned before, it's a regulated regime. Mm-hmm. And they set out a number of different rules uh, that we need to to obey. And they are really strict on privacy and security. And so these rules, they help govern how we control, transfer, store, and use the data. And so uh, more importantly, if we breach those, uh, you know, you could, we could face civil penalties, which is basically jail time. So it, it's an extremely serious area of, of our platform. And we take it very, very seriously. And the ACCC looks to enforce these with strong regulations and standards that evolve. So as we know, you you can't just do it once. You have to continually evolve and, and, and these standards change. And as an accredited party, we need to change with those standards. So Chris, I, I guess getting to what I guess a lot of people are listening to today's episode for is, is to talk about how open banking can potentially save them money. So are you able to give us a couple of of examples perhaps of of how it could potentially work? Yeah, yeah. I think probably the easiest one that most listeners will will understand is is a comparison site. 
So I think we've probably all been there to try and kind of get a better deal or a better gauge of what's going on in the market. But how often do you go to that site? You don't even know your interest rate. Mm-hmm. You don't even know when your introduction bonus fixed rate expired, for instance. You know, the banks get you in for those th- three months and then f- you forget about it, right? And so, or you don't even know how you're using your product, like your credit card. Maybe you are, you know, really good at paying it off. Maybe the interest is rolling over. And so, you know, imagine you were to go to one of these sites, these comparison sites like CanStar, for instance. Uh, you would be able to connect your bank account in a secure and regulated way, you know, with a technology that would be able to look at your transactions, your account type, the actual product that you're on, and kind of indicate to you, you know, maybe it would be better for you to go to a different type of product. Um, And a simple example would be a savings account. You know, very often, you know, there's a bunch of rules that you need to to, uh, buy every month. You know, maybe it's do five transactions or you can't, once you deposit, you can't take money out. And so when you share that data with a third party, the third party can actually look at the way that you're using that account and can kind of offer you a advice to maybe switch to another account because you would end up getting a higher interest rate. That's where it starts to open up the marketplace because no longer that information within your banking apps is only with the bank itself, you know? Other third parties who are accredited can provide services around that data that can help you save. So it sounds like, um, you know, it's doing a lot of legwork for people that, you know, they would have had to do themselves previously. And also given the kind of personalized insights that just weren't available potentially before. Correct. And that's 100% right, Tom. That's a really great example of uh, of what open banking is doing, I guess, to save people money now, potentially, if uh, if people are, uh, are willing and interested in uh, in sharing their their data. And in a moment, I want to uh, to delve into how Frollo is playing their uh, their part in all of this, Chris. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Aware Super. Have you been thinking about retirement? AwareSuper's My Retirement Planner is helping their members get retirement ready, whether retirement is two or 20 years away. It can help answer questions like, how much super do you need for retirement? Are you on track to meet your retirement goals? And what changes could you make now to help you grow your savings? AwareSuper's My Retirement Planner also provides a personalized step-by-step action plan, all available as part of the membership at no additional cost. It's a great first step in getting retirement ready. So find out how Aware Super could help you get retirement ready at aware.com.au. Be sure to read the PDS and TMD before deciding. So Chris, as I said, you've given us some, well, a great example already, but I'm curious to hear how Frollo itself, the Frollo app itself can, uh, can help people as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, Tom. So I guess I want to start no app, including our own, is, is no magic bullet. And I like to compare this, you know, when I speak to a friend, I compare it to kind of losing weight industry, right? So if you think about it, everyone knows how to lose weight, right? You eat a little less, you drink a little less, you do a little bit more exercise, right? And if you think about it, most people actually know how to save money, right? So in the sense that, you know, you spend a little less, you save a little more. And so, but I think what what is confusing for, for some and is, you know, just seeing where your money's going. Mm-hmm. You know, did you know that, you know, average Australian has two and a half banking relationships. So they have their accounts spread over different financial institutions, which makes it really hard just to see where your money's going. So at Frollo, what we try and do is we try and bring that all into one place so that you're not lost anymore. You can see kind of where everything is going. We've got some visuals. You're able to break it down into, you know, different, you know, monthly pay, annual pay, and and we categorize and we enrich those transactions so that you get a real clear sense of where your money's going. And the aim of that is really about giving you control. And then we provide you just different tools, you know, that you can turn on and, and use as you like. So for instance, we have where a tool that you can see your future payments. So it's a bill tracker, right? Where are those subscriptions going? Uh, What's coming up? You know, is there an annual bill that's coming that you just didn't realize that you had to pay for? We have tools where you can track your own goals and set a plan on your spend, so which is aka a budget. 
And then we also provide you kind of bite-sized insights along your journey to help you just guide you along the way and make sure that you can just stay on track on top of your money. And all these kind of help just ultimately what it comes down to when you spend is, is when you're in front of a counter, right? And you're about to buy something. What you want to do is say to yourself, can I really afford this? Should I really spend this money? And if you're confused and lost because you're, you know, you can't see where your money's going because it's across all those different bank accounts, that's what really makes it hard for you to make an informed decision. And so, you know, I'm proud to say that, you know, our app has saved people, you know, so people within the first three months of using our app has saved $1,200. Yes. And those who want to reduce their credit card debt over the six months have reduced it by more than five hundred dollars. Wow! So it's it you know it's the simple things very often, right? It's not the the fancy little thing, but it's the simple things that that make a difference. As someone who has, uh, I was just doing a, a quick hand in my head while you were talking there for a second. Um, I think I've got three banking savings accounts. Uh, I've got a credit card with a different provider. I've just got superannuation and and investments with various other people. The idea of being able to pull that into one place is really appealing alone, and then to have those uh, those reminders as well. I think that's the kind of um, kind of benefits that I think people could uh, you know really take away. And I guess, as you're saying before, one of the big things about open banking is just having access to uh, to uh, to that that uh, we didn't have before, and then in a more secure way. Um, Chris, before we start to wrap things up, I'm curious to w- as to whether you think that we uh, we've seen open banking reach its uh, full potential yet, though. No, not even close, Tom. Uh, we're just at the you know the first innings of this journey, and for me, it really is you know when I look at the future of banking, I really think that it will be uh, really around a hyper personalization and a focus on your financial well being, increasing that financial well being. And the only way for banks to really do this is to really have an understanding of of you completely, mm. holistically across all those, as you said, all those investment accounts and things like that, Tom. And it'll only take a matter of time before, a, you know, a CBA or Westpac, they introduce that into their own app and that everyone starts to see the benefit of it holistically in their own so, you know, that first killer, you know, where everyone, you know, like the chat GPT of AI, right? You know, you, you'll have this, this moment that everyone's like, actually, I want to be able to see everything all in one place and I want to be able to do it in, in my primary banking app. And I think once we start to see that, and then after that, it's like, you know, I want to interact with, you know, I want to get a loan. You know, you use your phone and you tap a QR code and, or, you know, you're able to to originate a loan simply because you have that holistic view. So I think what we're, you know, I, I see that future and you add to, on top of that AI um, and, and how, you know, the evolution of large language models is occurring. I mean, I really do see that, you know, this is just one pillar in that kind of holistic view, per, hyper-personalized banking experience that, you know, we will see. I am very much looking forward to that personally. And I'm sure a lot of people listening uh, will appreciate that as well. Um, Chris, final note before we go. We've talked a lot about open banking specifically today, but as you mentioned earlier on, there's more to this. So what else can we expect in the uh, kind of open finance realm, uh, you know, ahead? Yeah, so um, the the next step of this journey is open finance, uh, which starts rolling out in November uh, next year. And what that will mean is it it means that the non-bank lenders and the buy now, pay laters will also join this this ecosystem. And so, you know, I've kind of mentioned it a few times around that kind of holistic view of customer. It's only possible when you get that, you know, the the afterpays of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also get those non-bank lenders that, you know, that that people have personal loans, home loans with. And so that, that's kind of like in the short term. But I think the most exciting thing for me, which is, you know, maybe two years away, is around action initiation. And so what that means, I really think it's a game changer. And so, you know, when you think about that CBA app that has that holistic view, what action initiation will do is that instead of you having to make a payment, for instance, um, and so let's just say I have my Westpac account, my Westpac credit card in my CBA app. Instead of having to go to that Westpac app, 
I can actually initiate a payment within my CBA. Wow. So you're actually kind of bringing everything all into, you know, possibly one super app. Uh, and then additionally, like, you know, the painful part about a comparison site is that, you know, I can give you the information to say this saving accounts is, you know, is better for you. But the hard part is generally, you know, the person then needs to open up that account. And so that's a, that's a friction point. But with action initiation, you actually be able to open up that savings account within that single experience. So, you know, when I go back to that CanStar, you connect your account, they find you a better deal, and then you're actually able to open a, that account in a single experience. So action initiation, that's why I think it's a game changer. It really kind of is the final part of that, you know, seeing that whole holistic view, getting value out of it, and then making an action from it. And taking down a uh, another barrier to uh, to saving money, to making life easier for people. So. Correct. Yes, a hundred percent. Chris, we have covered an absolute ton of ground today. So thank you so much for joining us on uh, on Friends with Money. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Tom. Along with thanking Chris for all his great information, I would also like to thank today's sponsor, Aware Super. Have you been thinking about retirement? Aware Super's My Retirement Planner is helping their members get retirement ready, whether retirement is two or 20 years away. Find out how Aware Super could help you get retirement ready at aware.com.au. Be sure to read the PDS and TMD before deciding, though. And before we go, dear listener, do not forget that you can get in contact with us with any queries or episode ideas using our dedicated email, which is podcast at moneymag.com.au. And you can also keep up to date with all the latest financial news on our website by heading over to moneymag.com.au. That's it for this episode of the Friends of Money podcast, though, but we'll be right back in your feeds next week. I'm Tom Watson. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Friends with Money podcast. For credible, independent and easy to understand financial commentary, visit moneymag.com.au. Please remember that the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are general in nature and further independent advice and research based on your personal circumstances should be sought before making an investment decision.